In this video, we're going to discuss the Forcepoint DLP Incident Risk Ranking System and how it's available to combine multiple uh, incidents into cases, which really makes administrative workflow a lot easier and it helps to bring uh, high risk incidents together um, so you can really find and, and focus your investigation in the right area rather than look at uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of individual incidents and, and relying on a, a human to uh, sort of correlate those. So what we'll do is we'll start with an, an empty incident risk ranking dashboard here. And actually what I've done is made the entire DLP uh, incident list, at least for the last seven days, empty. So you can kind of get an idea of, of how it's built. But uh, if you have, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of incidents in here, this will actually demonstrate even better. Um, so what I'll actually do is I'll use two uh, test systems and two users to kind of show what, uh, what a combination of, of incidents into a case looks like. So first, I'll go over here to my Windows 7 system, uh, which has both endpoint and, uh, and network DLP. And what I'll do is, uh, is I've, I've put in the disable code so I can control this for the purpose of this demo, but uh, this way I can just produce a combination of different uh, incidents. But what I'll go ahead and do is, uh, is go to a website now utilizing network DLP through a proxy, and I'm gonna go ahead and upload a sample file that just has you know, 100 or so uh, PII records in it. Uh, and we'll get the uh, proxy block page, uh, which is expected. Um, I'll go ahead and close that because we, we won't use that anymore. Also send a network DLP incident uh, using the same file. And the goal is that we're, we're kind of seeing that this user is, is trying to, to leak this file out and, and we'll make a case out of that. Um, that send, again, that's network DLP. So what I'll do now is turn on the, um, the endpoint DLP so we can produce a few more incidents. Um, and what I'll do is just do uh, one over here. We'll see that this will get blocked by the endpoint. I'll go ahead and close that. I'll close that. And what I'll do now is switch to another user because in a DLP environment, you know, things are, are happening at, uh, at different, different rates. So this machine does not have the endpoint, but uh, we'll go ahead and upload, you know, a different file, which is just a database. Uh, um, of social security numbers that got blocked and I'll go ahead and send a, a network um, here. And this is a different user, this is Abraham Lincoln. Um, and uh, I'll go back over here as George Washington took a coffee break or, or whatnot. And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and take this uh, file, which I actually have open here and I'll, I'll go ahead and try and print it. And we'll see that the print will uh, produce an, an error prompt, uh, meaning that was blocked. Close that. I'll try to throw it onto a USB disk. That got blocked as well. Uh, and then I'll just uh, copy it into the uh, share folder. And you can see that that got blocked as well. So we have a couple of different incidents over a bunch of different channels, uh, over a few different users. Uh, and when I refresh here, we'll see all eight of those incidents. So we have, you know, George Washington um, did, you know, HTTP network endpoint email. Um, then Abraham Lincoln kind of came in, and then we did endpoint printing, removable media, and uh, LAN. So, um, you know, obviously this, there's a little continuity break here. There's multiple different channels. So if you imagine this uh, in scale where people are inserting, you know, in, not only Abraham Lincoln in here, but Thomas Jefferson, all, you know, hundreds of different incidents are coming in. It's really hard to see what George Washington did unless you start sorting him, but you don't have an idea that he's necessarily bad unless you're spending a lot of time in here. So that's where incident risk ranking really comes into play. So what I'll do is pause it right now and we'll wait for the analytics engine to run. Okay, we're back. Now the analytics engine is run. That typically runs overnight um, because it's you know processing a lot of data. And when we go back to the dashboard, we'll now see that we have, uh, we actually have a case. Um, which a case is basically high scoring activity, which is a combination of different incidents. So we can either enter over here, we have one case with a high score between six and 7.9, it's pretty high. And then we have you know, one over here, and this will tell you how many cases are developed over you know, a period of time. So you can click on any of these, but I'll go ahead and click over here, and you'll see that we have a case here where George Washington um, you know, copied social security number content, which is more than 100 matches, to remove all media among other destination uh, and channels. And, and you can kind of see some information here. And if you had multiple users 
who are all doing their own, you know, dubious activity. You would see multiple different, you know, cards here. You can see all the information about that user. What's nice is you can now click on those incidents, and uh, you'll see just the six incidents from this case, um, which are, as you know, there's no Abraham Lincoln in here. We have multiple different channels, and you can see here that you know it's, it's this file going to this website, you know, over network DLP, then network email, endpoint email, endpoint printing, endpoint LAN, and this is just standard. DLP incident review, but what's nice is here you have a very good snapshot of George Washington with this particular file or content. Uh, didn't didn't matter which channel it was, didn't matter what time it was, it didn't matter that Abraham Lincoln or other users, or even if George Washington started to do other things that are maybe a, a lower severity event, it wouldn't impact this case. So essentially, you come in into the beginning uh, of the day and you come in and you look. And your highest score will be a combination of the number of incidents as well as the severity of the incidents. Not necessarily in a low, medium, high, but in a, this, you know, if it's 100 plus matches of PII, that's a trigger. If it's machine learned or fingerprinted, uh, that's a additional trigger. Things going to USB drive uh, is a higher scoring thing than potentially going into a website just because USB is, is very discreet. I'm going to get this off this computer. Um, and most you know companies have policies against that, so it's a combination of of different types of force point um, IP that puts that together. But here you would have multiple different users, and it makes it very very easy to see the intent of the user and combine incidents to elevate a score rather than being stuck in a traditional DLP workflow where you know everything is just one off. George Washington's here, and, and you know unless you know the name of the file, which you can't really sort by easily very, very difficult. So that's really the beauty of incident risk ranking. I hope you found this video helpful.